So, you know, one of the themes that, that uh, if you follow this channel, you know I'm into is the, uh, the different perspectives. You know, here's Zahi Awas, the traditionalist, the Egyptologist, and then there's independent researchers like myself. There are those that, uh, you know, are, are kin to its aliens and, and it's Atlantis that built the pyramid. And there's independent researchers that don't necessarily take that stance. So there's a, there's a variety of perspectives on studying the Great Pyramid. So this is uh, taken from my hotel room at the Mina House. And so I had Zahi's book there, which I had just had him sign for me, Secrets from the Sand, My Search for Egypt's Past. In my own book, uh, a draft of a book I never published, The Great Pyramid, The Silent Sage Speaks. I was uh, reading through it there. And so, uh, you know, how about Zahi and me? You know, what's, what's the relations? What's the perspective? So, you know, uh, the Archaeological Pathways Tour Company took a risk in 2014. Tourism was dead in Egypt. It was gone. The revolution in 2011 scared all international travelers away. And for several years, there was nothing. But then uh, they took a risk, they did a tour, so I joined Zahi in 2014 here between the paws of the Sphinx, Sphinx. and uh, and so, you know, I wanted to see places that I knew I could only get with, with Zahi, okay? So I was with him again in 2015, the same spot here uh, between the paws of the Sphinx because he added something to the tour that I really wanted to see, the tombs of the builders. Now that is something that the people that believe that the pyramid was built by an older ancient tech civilization, oh, you couldn't have found the tombs of the builders because we don't know where they are. We find this evidence of ancient technology, but we don't know who they were or where they came from, when they lived, when their tools went. But here where Zahi says he knows the names of the builders because their names are on the tombs, their titles are there, their builders of the pyramid. Oh, that can't be true. What your eye shows, that can't be true, but Oh, these smoking guns of ancient technology. That's what we'll believe. So, yes, if, if that's the measure, I've taken my stand with, uh, with traditional Egyptologists like Zahi Oas. There's too much evidence. You know, follow the journey of ancient architects. You know, Matt Sibson from uh, that channel. You know, he started as an alternative, and he still is an alternative researcher. And he was totally on board with, oh, it's ancient. You know, it's much older than the Fourth Dynasty. And as he studied, he's an honest researcher, a good historian, he has come to the conclusion, you know, the Great Pyramid was built by dynastic Egyptians. You know, uh-oh, Zahi Awas and Mark Lehner were right. Well, you know, I let the chips fall where the research leads. So like ancient architects, I told him a long time ago he'd end up coming to this conclusion because I've studied, you know, this stuff for decades. So I do align with Zahi Awas on the fact that the tombs of the builders are at Giza. The builders of the Great Pyramid and, and the other pyramids there were Egyptians. Okay, sorry. So uh, at the end of each day on the tour, they, uh, the photographer would put out a bunch of pictures, just random pictures, and you could take one if you wanted to. So I took this one. I asked Zahi to sign it. We were at the tombs of the builders here. And he said to Larry, let the pyramids guide you. Okay, I, that's what I do. Not Z let Larry, follow me, Zahi Awas. No, I follow. I let the, the evidence lead me where it will. So I enjoyed the time with Zahi, and uh, there's where he signed my book. And I was even honored at the, uh, the banquet at the end of the, the 90 tours we had. We made the front page of the Cairo paper two times. Tourism is back in Egypt, you know. And, and it really, that you can put on the map. That's when it returned. And now it was safe and people felt better. And so uh, Zahi asked me to sit next to him. So yes, I'm sitting at the right hand of Zahi Awas. So, uh, you know, I'm not exactly his devotee or and his disciple. But uh, I'll sit with anybody and talk about the Great Pyramid. So whatever you, your viewpoint is. Now, this is my most recent time with him. Uh, it's a few years ago. And uh, the scowl that he sort of has there, well, you picked it up if you think it's a scowl. Because I asked him a question about this. That's why I went up to him after a lecture there. I wanted to ask him about a question from his book, Mountains of the Pharaohs. And, uh, you know, he said in there that there was this uh, relief that was found in the causeway uh, of Khufu. Uh, which has all been taken other places. It's actually found down in Licht at, uh, at one of the temples down there. And he said that there was a head of a foreigner that uh, appeared, you know, uh, near a, a uh, cartouche of Khufu. So here it is. You're looking at the very relief. I tracked it down. Uh, it, he doesn't list it in the book. It was really kind of hard to track it down, but I did. It's now in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. So you can see the relief above and then you can see sort of a printed version of it down below there. So uh, there's the, the head of a foreigner and uh, Egyptologists say that Zahi settled in the book Fer Mountains of the Pharaohs. Uh, let's see, uh, 
I'm drawing a blank on the other Egyptologist I know has said that uh, that head is a, that head of a foreigner. So I'll take the Egyptologist word for it. So what I'm saying here is this evidence because normally what look what the text says. Normally it's unheard of in Egyptian hieroglyphics for a foreigner to have his face placed next to a royal cartouche. And and that and had the head of a foreigner placed in a position of honor next to the royal cartouche for Khufu with other titulary and other underneath the protecting wings of the royal bird. So the protecting wings of the royal bird are over the foreigner? Like this is unheard of. So I'm suggesting this is archaeological evidence for the Philitis that Herodotus talks about. Herodotus says that the Egyptian priests he interviewed said the people at Khufu's time said the pyramid was built not by Khufu, but by Philitus, who was a shepherd who had the ear of a Khufu at that time. So here's a possible resolution for, you know, th those that say it's got a more, you know, ancient attribution than, than the fourth dynasty, you know, Khufu, the, the, the dynastic Egyptians. Because that foreigner, that shepherd, could have had a previous esoteric knowledge, and now he's filling the head of Khufu with it. And again, the Egyptians at that time, according to Herodotus, who even uh, Flinders Petrie says is a reliable historian, so so th that 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 widely acclaimed, highly honored foreigner could be an example of someone who would be next to the cartouche of the pharaoh and underneath the protecting wings of the royal bird. This might be the philitis that Herodotus talks about. And if it does, it brings in a whole nother avenue for the tremendous arithmetic, geometry, geology, geography, the astronomy, the astrology, the symbology, the prophecy that's in the Great Pyramid. It brings in another source. Oh, maybe it can, can go back, point back somewhere, you alternative researchers. So anyway, I'm making this to say that uh, my relationship with Zahi Awas has been adversarial, if anything. I respect him for what he's done for Egypt. He's the face uh, of, of, of Egypt and all that Egypt stands for. He still is a member of the Supreme Council of Antiquity, so though he's been tr tried to be discredited by people even within Egyptology. It's never happened. He's continued to maintain uh, a face of uh, uh, authenticity in the field of Egyptology. So let's look at the, the difference between independents like myself and Egyptologists like Zahi Oas. Well, the strength of an independent, you know, I'm not bound to anybody. You know, I'm, I'm not getting money from anybody. I, you know, I, I don't, uh, you know, make myself a dis disciple to uncharted X, any XD or anybody. And, uh, and so I'm independent, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a stooge to Zahi Awas either. Now the strengths of Egyptology are they have all the visibility, you know, National Geographic, you know, New York Times, everybody looks to them for the answers. They don't go asking, you know, the alternative researchers what, what the story on a pyramid or a temple is. They go to Dr. Mark Lehner. They go to Zahi Oas. So that's one of the strengths. They've got the visibility and the respectability of the society. One of the weaknesses of an independent research, well, one that I've seen, is you guys always slam the Egyptologists. They're hiding something. They're liars. What would be the motive for Dr. Mark Lehner and Dr. Zahi Oas to hide something from you? Now, it could be that they've discovered something with a robot up in the pyramid that they're researching, and so they haven't told the public about it. But what thing do you think they found they're not telling you about? Do you think they found a spaceship under the Sphinx and they want to be the lone ones that will take advantage of that spaceship to get off this earth when the trouble comes so they don't want to tell anybody? Is that what you're thinking? Do you think they found a hall of records or a, a, a pile of doubloons, golden doubloons that are going to make them rich and they're not going to share it with you? I mean, what do you think they're hiding when you say they're hiding something? I do believe they might be hiding something if they're if the muon scans have taken them to some internal chambers and they're examining th some things. They don't owe it to the public to make everything public. Do you make everything public that you do in your editing room, in your, you know, the things you say with other researchers? Do you want it? So, so yes, there's a certain amount of scholarship they might be doing that they don't reveal to everybody until they're sure about it. And that's happening quicker and quicker with the way the Department of Ant the Ministry of Antiquities has, has been joined to the Ministry of Tourism. And they're trying to get out their fi the finds of what they're finding as fast as possible. Look what they're doing in Saqqara. So the weakness of the independence is get over it. Do your research. Show us you have something and stop slamming, you know, Dr. Hawass and Dr. Lehner. They're doing legitimate work. Read the books they've written. Look at, look at the immense amount of research that Dr. Lehner's done on the Giza Plateau. 
lay off of him, stop saying they're hiding something, and show us what you have, okay? And the weaknesses of Egyptology are just the weaknesses that go with any discipline. You know, uh, I, when I studied political science, I taught political science at three colleges. One of my mentors showed me how the weaknesses of political science as a discipline. We don't even have any major theorems like they do in sociology. They've got three major viewpoints, you know, in sociology. So every one of the disciplines suffers uh, from all kinds of things, including that they subject themselves to Western, you know, rational thinking. What about esoteric thinking? You know, what, what about, uh, you know, bringing in uh, other, you know, avenues of knowledge besides just rationality? Okay, and the weaknesses of Egyptology are a bunch of mistakes were made in the beginning that are now in the profession like ruts. And if you're going to, you know, take all the time and money to become an Egyptologist, you've got to, you know, bow to the party line. It's very rare for someone to fight some parts of, you know, standard, uh, you know, theology, eschatology, whatever you want to call it, of Egyptology. So the weakness is, is the weakness of an organized group of people that, that, that ultimately many things are run by power, not by scholarship. Yes, that's true. For instance, when Emmanuel Velikovsky, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, you know, from the 1950s and 60s, wrote his books, uh, you know, Ages uh, in, in Chaos, uh, and, and Harlow Shapley from Harvard got publishers not to publish it, and he hadn't even really read it just because Velikovsky had some, some new things. Oh, planets can, can leave their orbit. You know, Venus came, was shot out of, uh, what was it, Jupiter? I forgot. And so, oh, that can't be, you know, because our astrophysics doesn't allow it. Well, now a lot of astrophysicists say stuff like that happened, pole shifts and everything. So Velikovsky was run out. He was shamed not because his scholarship had been answered. He was shamed because there's power in the, in, in the academics that shut down the publishers that were going to publish Velikovsky. So one of the weaknesses of Egyptology, and face yourself, Egyptologists, you've been slammed, you know, right here. Let's just take one. John Romer, an Egyptologist, slams you. How come I'm the only guy writing about the Great Pyramid? This is the first book by an Egyptologist in 100 years about the Great Pyramid. This is a serious study. It's not just a coffee table book that Lehner and Hawass give you. It's a real study of the Great Pyramid. And he says, why did nobody else do it? So he's slamming the profession of Egyptologists. So there's a, there's a, a cut down from within. Okay. So, yeah, there's some weaknesses in the independents and in the Egyptologists. So, we're human beings. Let's stop pointing the finger, you know, at everybody and just give to the world what you have. Show us something. Show us something, not a title. And just I'll end this by showing my credentials are in order to show that my relationship with Zahi was adversarial. I'm gonna, you're going to listen to three uh, questions I asked him. Well, actually, the first question's cut off. He, the, the start of this clip you're going to see is him answering a question that I asked him. Then you hear me ask two questions to which he gives answers, and that's how I'll close out the video. Thanks for watching. Sorry for the, uh, the spilling over of some passion. Sorry, not sorry. Thanks for watching. Uh, um, and Safir has no at all. Actually, we found uh, northern side of the Big all the exterior land that has been moved by the ancient Egyptian after constructing the pyramid to the northern side. And we recorded everything. If you look at the interior of the pyramid, there is no evidence at all about existing. It's a feeling of this guy who lived from his memory and no one, no Egyptologist really approved it. Well, what about the sand that was found behind the uh the uh, Queen's Chamber passageway where the blocks are set on top of each other. And, sand, yeah, they, didn't they drill through and they found sand indicating? That is in the corridor, but the sand doesn't show anything. The sand could be, this is what they say, I didn't really know if this is true or not, because this happened, I think, in 1983, uh, 1984. I, I never bought for us to discuss it. Something they said in the newspaper. I don't know if it's wrong. And then the robot, the robot competition you mentioned there. What, what's the plans to proceed with that? Is that going? Are you just going to? As I said, that we are planning soon to uh, continue the work inside the Pyramid. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you